What's up guys, it's JDog back here again and we're back with another tutorial. And in this video we're going to find out how to add Dynamap. A plugin that will show your Earth in a Google Map style fashion, whether it's 3D or 2D. It also shows you the underground networks and it's a live image so you can check out where your players are. This also connects very well with grief prevention, townie, factions and also shows where factions and bases are. And that includes cool markers that you can add around your map. So if that's what you're looking for, you got the video. Now before we start, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, as it really helps out my channel a ton, and it gives me the oomph to make them next videos. So first things first, we're going to need a paper, spigot, or bucket server. Preferably, I'm going to be using the paper one, I'm going to be using the latest version right now for the Java version, because it supports both the spigot and bucket plugins, and usually I find this to be more optimised. However, totally up to you. Next up, and if you're using Multicraft, we're going to go over to files, and we're going to go to plugins to actually install the plugin. I will also show you how you can install this manually if you're not using Multicraft. We're just going to go ahead and click on our plugins list. I'm going to keep spigot selected in the source, and then I'm just going to type Dynamap. Spelt like that in case you wondered. Now here we have got Dynamap and we have got the add-ons as well. We're simply going to be starting with Dynamap. If you are looking to add the add-ons as well, it's fairly simple. They usually configure straight away. We're just going to be looking at the Dynamap for now. And if you are looking for more tutorials for any of these, make sure to leave it down in the comments. I'll make sure to help out with more videos. So this time we're going to go to the Dynamap with a little R. Usually the description says something with a little Google Maps there in quotes. And let's open this one up. Now let's go to install. Now we'll warn you, sometimes this doesn't install on the first time, so it's a little bit larger if it doesn't try to install again. There we go, it installed that time again. Do try it at least two times, sometimes the first time doesn't work, and if it doesn't work, you can follow the steps that we're just about to take now. So with the server still stopped, and I really should have mentioned that, make sure that your server stopped when you're installing or deleting plugins. We're also going to look at the second manual way of adding a plugin, which is going to be using FTP file access with FileZilla. FileZilla is a free and easy way to be able to connect to your server and move files without any limitations. It's much faster and it's very secure. I'll leave the link in the description for FileZilla. It's FileZilla-Project.org and then we're going to go ahead and download it. Once downloaded, you can see your computer's files on the left-hand side and your server files on the right-hand side. You won't see anything yet because you haven't connected. To connect, you're going to need to get the host, the username, the password and the port. The place that you find these is by clicking onto files and going to your FTP file access and finding the access uh, information there. Your FTP address is going to be going into the host section. Your FTP port is going to be going into the port section. Username, of course, we're going the username section and whatever your multicraft password is will go into the password section click quick connect and then after that you can always connect back to it by using the little drop down so for this we're going to need to download the plugin manually if you're not going to be using it through the plugin section on multicraft and i'm going to have the link in the description or in the tutorial either way the link will be able to be found through the description or just search dynamap when you're on spigot go to download now and download that file next up once connected and you have your server file showing up on the right we're going to go to the plugin section double click that as you can see, we already have it because we just downloaded it from Multicraft. However, you're going to drag it from the left-hand side, whatever folder you have it in. Let's say, for instance, it was this, and you're going to drag it over to the right-hand side. This will then make a copy on your server. Once you're done, exit out, and we're just going to go ahead and start the server back up. Either way, we have now got the plugin on our server, and we just need to start it up to get all the files ready. Now, with the server started, we can now go into the configuration. Don't worry, guys, we are almost there. One thing to note right here is that if it hasn't worked by using the files and plugins then just follow the manual way that I just showed now. Uh, there, it's just Sometimes they just don't update quick enough with Multicraft. It might be on a previous version. It might not work well for you. If that hasn't, just download it manually like we just showed from the actual Dynamap site. Now with that all done, let's just stop our server. I do prefer to stop our server. You can change configuration and restart it. I just do prefer before making changes, actually completely stopping the server, making the change and then starting it back up again. Once that's stopped, we're going to come over to files and we're going to go down to FTP file access and log in using our Multicraft password. Once we're logged in, we're going to go down to our plugins section. Here you're going to find the Dynamap jar, but we're going to be looking for the Dynamap folder. So let's just click that to open it. And from here, we're going to be looking for configuration.txt. From this section, make your way over to the right of it and go ahead to edit. One of the first things that we need to do is we actually need to change the resolution. This is only because the resolution on high res, which is what is set to as default, uh, takes an awful amount of toll on your server. I really do suggest switching this to very low res or low res. The way to do this is by even typing in V low res, just like that. So V low res for very low resolution or just low res if you just want a low res resolution. Next up, we need to look for the web server port to make sure that we change this. If you're struggling like I am, you can press Control, press F. You get this little chat bar and this can then search through the document for the words that you're looking for. By typing in port, you can find that it will show up all the words with port or you could type in web server and it will take you to this exact location or highlight it anyway. 
Now the deal with this is that we need to choose a number that's greater than 1024, so 1024. You need to choose any number that's greater than that. So for this example, I'm going to go for 2384. Now just a little side note here, if this does end up, once we do complete the setup and it says this has been taken when you load up Dynamap, you simply just have to come and change this number to a different number. It just means that somebody else has used that particular number. The last thing that we need to do is just make sure that the image properties are set right as well. So again, I'm going to use my little uh, bar up here. That was again using Control and F together, and it will show you the little bar, and that will then highlight the words that you're looking for. So we're going to be looking for the image format section. This is going to be set to a different type of JPEG. We're just going to change this just to say JPEG. So take that off or whatever the default is and just leave it as JPEG. Once you're done, go ahead and hit save to save the documents. Now let's go ahead and start up the server. This really is almost the last step now, guys. We've got one more step and you can actually start to check out your live map yourselves for your servers. Now before the next step, it's uh, quite essential that you take a note of the world name that you're using here. My world is called Worlds. I'm just going to copy that over. If your is called anything, Factions, Factions 1, make sure you just copy the name of the world. Now we're going to head over to the console. You're going to want to type in here, Dine Map. So D-Y-N-M-A-P, full render, all in one word, and then the name of the world. So mine was world, so I'm going to type it in exactly as it shows there. And then go ahead and press send. Now just to explain this part, this will now start rendering your world. So as much of the world that you have loaded up, it's now going to start to render and it's going to start to show on your web page. As you can see, it's going to be doing 100 tiles at a time. Um, this shouldn't take too long because I've just started a brand new map. However, if your map is quite large, this might take a while. Don't get scared. And if you've got members, just try and warn them to stay off the server for a while. For instance, my server on the Universal took honestly about six hours. So we just had to wait it out because it has to do the render of the normal world, the 3D world, underground. And another tip is here that if you also want it to do the nether and the end, you can run the same command, just make sure that you put in your world name. Normally, so for instance, mine is worlds, so it would be underscore the underscore the end. That's usually worlds the end, or it'll be worlds the nether. Either way, now it's time to just sit tight, wait for these tiles to render. And once it's done, it's going to give you that quintessential address that you can then use to view it online and give to your members, visitors, or anybody else that wants to view. Now guys, mine took about 10 minutes, so I've only had about 983 tiles. However, believe me when I say this really can take a huge amount of time, so please do this at a time that you know, maybe overnight that might take anywhere up to 5-6 hours. Either way, we're all finished and done. Now to actually view our map, we're going to go up, we scroll up a little bit on the console, until you see the web server started bit. Here we're going to copy this entire numerical sequence, which is basically the IP, followed by the port that you made. You can then open up a new web page and then simply paste it into the search bar on the top. And here we go. Here's my tiny little map of uh, the only thing that's really been explored in the whole map. And it really was as quick as that. As you see, the world spawn is set as spawn. And I'll show you where you can find the commands um, to set the markers in a second. However, before we do that, let's go through some of the things that the map offers. On the left, you can obviously zoom in, zoom out using this little button. You can also check your layers. These layers will, you, well, you'll get more layers the more plugins you have. For instance, if you also um, enable or upload a Dynamap grief prevention, that will then show you people's markers, who owns them, etc. The same with Towny and many other plugin integrations. You can choose whether to show these markers and the players as well using this. The little location will show you exactly your location, so if you want to check out where to teleport to, you can use this to check the location on the map. On the top here, we have the time that the server has been up for, the time of day, what way the map's facing on the top right, and then on the right corner, you can go into it with your mouse, and then it shows you your world types. This is how you can also switch between 2D and 3D. So if you click on surface, you're going to get more of a 3D image that you can zoom in on. And as you can see, you can actually see down that cave a bit. Next up, we have the caves, which is this little blue bit here, where you can see all the underground caves using the map as well. And it looks sort of cool. After that, if you have um, done the world nether, world's the end, then you can also load them up. Obviously, I didn't do that. However, I did show you how to do it. You can also full render it with the world name, which, as you can see, is also here. Now, to find where the commands are and add-ons, Simply visit the Spigot page. The add-ons are all here and listed. There are a ton of them, including Citizens, Player Warps, Factions, Townie, World Guard. And all of these are downloadable in the exact same way that we just downloaded Dynamap without as much configuration. For the commands, we're going to scroll to the top of the page and we we'll click on the top source code GitHub link. From here, make your way over to the wiki. Then you can come down um, for the for user section on the wiki page down to the commands. And here you're going to get all the commands um, for different sort of renders because you can render in different radiuses, update renders, check out the stats. And this is the important markers bit. So these are the commands for the markers rather than going through them because they're pretty self-explanatory. In fact, let's jump in game. Let's do one now. 
And as Minecraft is loading up at the moment, I'm just going to show you something that's important, which is going to be the icons list. Now, there isn't such an actual list that I can just copy down and paste. There's more of a picture that always pops up, or it's on the GitHub C page. However, maybe a screenshot, or I'll find a way to get it down in the description so you can find this area here. But they're all pretty self-explanatory. You can see the icons there, and you can see the names. So now to set a marker, I'm simply going to pull up the chat bar, and I'm going to put in this command here. It's going to be demarker, add, and then I'm going to put the label. This so I'm just going to put test here, so uh, the name is going to show as test. After the icon, or you can see it also does give you the list of icons. You can just press tab to go through them. But you simply choose the icon that you want. So it's going to be icon and then followed by the building. Press enter and as you can see the marker ID has been added. Now if we search for our life map again using that um, IP and port. You're going to see that we also have a second icon called test with the little icon. You can't see it quite so well so I've left my character right there. But that's how you can easily add them. Or you with going through the rest of the commands. You've got demarker move here, update, delete, show your list. You've even got demarker icons to list um, all the attributes which I had no idea about. I've just noticed now. And the list goes on. So I'll leave all of that fun configuration up to you. And I think it'll be time for me to go off and find out my next tutorial to make. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you on the next one. Bye bye.